But out of that list of 152, I have selected 14 that mean a lot to me. 14 names that brings hope and peace and, and, and encouragement to me. And it is my prayer that as we go through these lessons, they will bring hope, peace, and encouragement to you. Because when we complete these lessons, I want us to have even a closer relationship with our Lord. Tonight, I've got some questions for you. Is there someone tonight that you miss terribly? Maybe they have died. Maybe they've just moved away. Maybe it's a friend, a family member. Maybe it's someone that left you in a bad way and left you with some hurt. But is there someone that you miss, you really miss today? Second question. Is there someone ending departure is already causing you sadness? Maybe it's a student going off to college. Maybe it's someone about to get married in your family. Maybe it's a friend who got a, a job promotion that requires a relocation. You know, unfaithful friends can and will abandon you. And even the most faithful friends die, leaving you behind. And those of us who have loved ones, even our loved ones sometimes, fail to understand us, fail to comprehend what's going on. Now, I don't ask those two questions to make you sad. I ask those two questions to prepare you for this lesson. Because see, there's someone who will never leave us. There's someone who will always be there for you in good times and bad times. I want you tonight to realize the impact of separation. And then we can all rejoice with the fact that our Jesus is Emmanuel. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. We need, we need a Lord like that. Go with me now to Matthew. Matthew chapter 1. Verse 23, Matthew quotes that verse that Tim just read. Why? Because he had already given us the words of the angel to Joseph, saying that you shall call him Jesus. But Matthew is writing to a Jewish audience, and they needed to know that this Jesus is God with us, because that's what the name Emmanuel means, God with us. Go with me to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. What kind of God with us is this Jesus? We do not have a high priest who can sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Because we have Jesus, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may attain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. The two most Jewish books of the New Testament, Matthew in the book of Hebrews, is talking about God with us. How that Jesus is God with us. Go with me to Romans, or excuse me, to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in Him. We can go to God. Why? Because we have a mediator, Jesus the Emmanuel. We have one that is there for us, who understands us and will never leave us. 
That's what Paul said in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is found where? Which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We need Emmanuel. In a world that's ever-changing, in a world that can disappoint us, in a world that can often fail us and hurt us, we need Emmanuel. Let me tell you my goal for this lesson tonight. My goal is simply this. I want to make the name Emmanuel meaningful. So meaningful to you that you will forever hear it as heaven's assurance of Jesus' presence in your life. I don't want us to ever feel abandoned. I don't want us to ever feel alone. I don't want us to ever feel that no one cares. Because Jesus cares. Because he is Emmanuel. Now, let's talk about a little background to the name Emmanuel. Matthew quotes Isaiah. Why would he do that? Well, the book of Isaiah in the hearts of the Jewish people was a very special book of hope and encouragement. In chapter 7, the verse that, that Tim read, the nation of Judah is hard-pressed. Why were they hard-pressed? Because they had not one enemy, but two enemies pressing them, trying to surround them. They had the nation of Assyria. That's bad enough. But they had the northern kingdom. They had Israel pressing down on them. They had their own blood brothers, people that they were of the same family, pressing them, surrounding them. And they didn't know where to turn to. Because when your family abandons you, turns their back on you, what can you do? Isaiah gave that prophecy, the prophecy about Jesus, yes, but a prophecy of hope the Jewish people loved. The book of Isaiah, it meant so much. And here is Matthew writing to Jewish Christians and he says, guess what? That Emmanuel that was promised way back in Isaiah, guess what? He came. It's Jesus. It's Jesus the Christ. Now, that word that Matthew interprets to mean God with us, the word Emmanuel, only appears three times in the Old Testament. Two times it's translated as Emmanuel, and one time it's going to be translated as God with us. Let's go with me to the book of Isaiah. We've already read chapter 7, verse 14. That's the first time that the name is given in Manuel. Go with me now over to verse 8. He will pass through Judah. He will overflow and pass over. He will reach up to the neck, and the stretching out of his wings will fill the breath of your land. Oh, Emmanuel. Judah, don't give up. It does look bad, you know. It looks like you're down for the last count. But Judah, don't give up. It's Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. Then verse 10, this is the third time. Take counsel together, but it will come to nothing. Speak the word, but it will not stand. For, in the English translators here, instead of putting what the word is actually is, in Hebrew, it should have been translated Emmanuel. 
they give us the definition. The translators gave us the definition. For God is with us. For God is with us. Folks, we need that. In a world that's getting increasingly more evil every day. You know, we don't live in Mayberry anymore. This is not Mayberry. We need Emmanuel with us. Manuel, or excuse me, Matthew brought light to Isaiah's use of the name Emmanuel. He says, Jewish Christians, we've got it here. What we always hoped for, what we long for, he came. That's Jesus, Emmanuel. Life can be frightening. Life can be overwhelming. Life can get you down. Frightened people can become confident. Why? Because Emmanuel walks with us. We never take a step without Jesus. Go back to the Old Testament. Moses is being called by God to go back to Egypt. He's 80 years old. He escaped 40 years prior with the threat of death. He had killed an Egyptian. He left the splendor, the plush life of an Egyptian family living with Pharaoh to living 40 years in the desert as a shepherd. And Moses is called by God from the burning bush, I want you to go back. Oh, God, I can't go back. <laughs> you know, hey, Pharaoh don't, don't like me, and, and it's not going to be good for me. Uh, I can't go back. And what does God say to him? I will certainly be with you. That is Emmanuel, just a different form of Emmanuel there. I will certainly be with you. Well, let's take it from Moses to Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua is called to take over leadership. He's got to step into the giant shoes of Moses. I mean, that's a job. Moses had been the leader. What do I do? How do I do this? Moses was bigger than life. You know, how can I replace a legend? Not once, but twice. God says, I will be with you. Once again, in Hebrew, a form of the name Emmanuel. I will be with you. Don't sweat it, Joshua. You're not doing this alone. Just as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Our confidence. Let's take it from Moses. Let's take it from Joshua. Let's bring it down home to you and me. Emmanuel is with us today. In Exodus chapter 33, Moses is concerned. What's going to happen? What's going to be the future of the people I've been leading? And in verses 12 through 16, what does God do? He reassures him, I will be with you. A form of Emmanuel. And Matthew after giving that name of Jesus in Matthew chapter 1, what does Matthew do? How does he book in his book? How does he book in the book that he is writing? Chapter 1, Emmanuel, God with us. Matthew 28, and lo, I am with you always. I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. I'm with you always. Don't sweat it, Christians, because we do not go alone. Don't sweat it, Christians. You're not by yourself. 
God the Son is with us today through God the Spirit. God the Spirit resides in the heart of every Christian. And through God the Spirit, we have God the Son. God the Son is with us. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who really can be against us? A man once noticed in the distance a bunch of hungry sparrows. It was the middle of the winter. There was a solid sheet of ice over all the ground. All the food sources for those little birds was covered with snow and ice. And he noticed in the distance someone had left a big pile of bird seed out on the ground to feed the birds. And, and a big flock of hungry sparrows had come down and they were busy eating that bird seed. They were feasting at that banquet. And that man, that Christian, he decided he wanted to get a closer look at that. So he got closer. You know what happened when he got close? The birds flew away. He thought to himself, I didn't mean any harm to them. I was just going to observe. Why did they fly away? And then it hit him. They flew away because in their perspective, I'm a big monster. I'm a big force that they can't understand and, and they don't know what to do about me. So they flew away because of fear. You know, that's really the story of Emmanuel. You know, God up to Jesus, God had been present in his creation. He was on that mount when the law of Moses was given to Moses. And the people packed away because why? the smoke, you know, and the thunder and, and everything. They were scared. But God, God is not a monster. God is someone who loves us, and the best way to show his love is to become what? Like one of the sparrows. To leave the splendor of heaven and come down and be just like one of those sparrows where he can relate to all of the other sparrows. That's what Jesus did. He left the splendor of heaven so that we would come to understand who God really is in our lives. Hebrews chapter 1. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son. We can't understand a God that's so big, but we can understand a God who came to this earth, lived approximately 33 years, suffered the same problems and pains and hardships that you and I suffer today, and went to the cross because he loved us so very much. Jesus is the comfort for all of our sorrows and pains. Remember, I asked you at the very beginning, do you miss someone? Do you have sorrows? Do you have pains? Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have, for he himself, Jesus has himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Have you ever had a friend stab you in the back? Jesus understands. Judas betrayed him. Have you ever had a friend to 
leave you stranded in time of need. Jesus understands. The disciples, except for Peter and John, all scattered. Have you ever had pains and sorrows, hunger? Have you ever tried for something but did not succeed? Have you ever had any problem that just overwhelmed you? Jesus is that comfort that you need. For all those who live in the shadow of death, a glorious light has dawned. For all those who stumble in the darkness, behold, your light has come. Emmanuel, our God, is with us. God with us, Jesus the Christ, issues a challenge to all of us. John 14, verse 15, if you love me, Let's do a poll real quick. How many of us love Jesus? Every hand goes up. Every hand goes up. We all love Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Pretty simple. Do you love Jesus? If you really love Jesus, you're going to keep his commandments. You're going to do what he has said because you love him. A little girl once said to her mama, Mama, I like you better than God. The mama said, Oh, honey, don't say that. Don't say that. Why, why would you say that? This little four-year-old girl looked up at her mother and said, I like you better than God because I can hug you and you can hug me back. Why did Jesus come to earth? Because we all, from time to time, need a hug. From a God who understands our problems. He is Emmanuel. He will always be Emmanuel. He is God with us. In verse Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul is trying to reassure the church at Thessalonica. They're concerned about the second coming. So he talks to them about the second coming. And then he gives all of us. He gives all of us great hope. And he said, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. In the same way that God came to be with us, Jesus the Christ, one day we will get to be with him. Even if there are others you are missing the day, there's always one you can depend on no matter what. He is and always will be Emmanuel. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Why in the world do I always use the same verses? You know, I could pick out a lot of different verses for the plan of salvation. I use these same. I've been doing that for over 40 years. Because if you want to argue, you're not going to argue with me. You're going to be arguing with Jesus. Because Jesus said every word in those verses that I'm pointing to right now. You're not arguing with me. You're going to argue with Jesus. As a Christian, do you need to seek forgiveness? It's wonderful that our Emmanuel gives us that great blessing of going to God and saying, God, as your child, I messed up. Will you forgive me? And God forgives. The church stands ready to pray with you and for you right this minute. If you have any need to respond, will you please come as we stand and sing for your encouragement?